This is a classic Jonathan Jernigan tutorial that I found out how to do something and I figured you might need it someday too. So here we are. What I'm gonna show you how to do in this video is print any specific portion of your site that you want. In my case, the client needed a way for front-end visitors to press a button and it print a specific div on the site and all of its contents. This is really easy to do and set up and I'm gonna provide you the code to get that working on your site. I promise it's not difficult. There's a little bit of JavaScript involved, but I'll walk you through the important bits of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's a demo site I set up using generate blocks. And in this particular case, we're going to print the contents of my container, which in this case begins about right here. It says this will be printed, this text and this image. And then we can see some stuff below that will not be printed, which is the button itself and this particular heading. So if I go ahead and click it, then you can see it's gonna open up my print dialog here. I have the ability to set a title, all of my content, and I'll show you where this border comes from in just a little bit. But you can see there is my heading, there's my text, and there's my image. So exactly as we want, it's working great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code and I'm gonna walk you through this. So like I mentioned, this is some custom JavaScript. So however you prefer to add JavaScript to your site will work. In my case, I prefer WP Codebox. Now what this code is doing is it's going to find the element that we want to be our print button. And we need to make sure that element has an ID of print button. I'll show you how to do that and generate blocks in just a little bit. Then what we're actually going to print has a class on it of print this div. Both of these things can be customized to whatever you want. Next up, what it's gonna do is open the print window in a new tab, just as you saw already on the front end. And then this is kind of where the code for that page kicks in. So this is just standard HTML, should look fairly familiar. And really what you would want to do in this case is just change the page title. So we already looked at that. And of course you can see your print title right here matches what we're looking at in this particular spot as well. Now, of course, I've gone through a few iterations of this code. And one thing I discovered is that your styling is very unlikely to carry over because you're kind of in a whole separate part of your website, opening up this whole new window and rendering some of this content. So you're probably not going to have a lot of the same styles from your site. In my case, I just went with system UI fonts because really it doesn't actually matter that much, but I've gone ahead and configured some of the things that you might need to make this look reasonably familiar to your particular site. There are some weird defaults like with figure and image tags, some of which had uh, margins that were like, you know, 45 or 80 pixels. There was a lot of space that I didn't need in my particular case. So adding CSS to this is a little tricky because you have to add the plus and make sure you know, you're formatting things correctly, but it's really not that hard. And most of this you can probably adapt. If you're not using an H3 and you're using an H1, just simply change it like that, no big deal. Then of course, as we move down the page a little bit, there's our closing head tag and our opening body tag. And this is where that blue border comes from on the front end. Of course, we haven't yet built our layout and generate blocks, but we didn't add a blue border. That was added here dynamically with this JavaScript. And the way that that works is because I'm adding a div surrounding all of the content that I'm printing, then the print contents come, and then I'm closing that div. Then of course, my class here is wrapper. So if I look, I have dot wrapper. I said width fit content. Sometimes you can have overflow, so that's why that's there. Then there's a blue border, and then some padding, of course, all of which you can customize totally to your liking. Then it's gonna close that body tag and our HTML. It's going to go ahead and basically close out that window and begin the print function. And the reason why you can see that there's this delay here of 200 milliseconds is when I added the image, it wouldn't load in the print dialog um, properly until I added a little bit of delay. So that's why when I click the button, you can see that the page opens pretty much instantly, but the actual print dialog, now it's not gonna work. The print dialog, there we go, doesn't actually pop up for just a second, as you can see. So that's where that comes from. So all in all, the relevant parts of this are for you to take a look at the ID of the button, the class of your container that's going to hold all of your content you want to be printed, your title, and then of course your styles here in the middle. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how we would actually build that on the back end. So here in my generate block site, I'm going to start with a container. Whatever your specific builder calls it doesn't really matter. Divs or sections or containers are going to work because we're looking for a specific class. So on my container, I'm going to go over here to advanced, scroll down to the additional CSS classes, and then of course it was print this div is the class we want. So we're gonna type that in. And then let's just add some content. So this headline, we're just gonna say, hello world. We're just gonna add some text in here. This will be printed. And then we're gonna add a simple image block. I think I only have one image on this site, so we'll just use the same one. And then I'm just gonna make it way smaller, like 250 pixels wide. Then what I'm gonna do is add in another container and this will be the content that we don't want to be printed. 
So we'll add in, oh my gosh, there we go. Hashtag Gutenberg stuff. What we're gonna do here is just say, don't print me. Then we'll add in a button and then we'll just say print. Now on this button, this is where the ID comes into play. So over here on the right hand side in the advanced tab HTML anchor, this was the anchor called print button, just like that. We're just setting the ID of the element so that our JavaScript knows when this button is clicked, then we need to open the, the print script that we looked at just a little bit ago. Now, it doesn't really make sense for this to be below that heading, so I'm gonna go ahead and just bump this up a little bit. And that's all we need to do. So let's update this. I'm gonna go ahead and close these two tabs so we just get a fresh page here. So there we go, hello world, we're expecting this block to be printed, this block, and our image. So let's go ahead and print. And just as we expected, the items that should be printed are there, and the heading that we said, you know, not inside of the other container, will not be printed exactly as intended. So this particular styling that we're looking at here is really where you would want to manipulate that JavaScript. You could change the width, you could get rid of this border, change the font styles, you know, whatever you need to do will be manipulated with those styles on your um, JavaScript, you know, in this section right here in your style tag. For instance, we could go ahead and change this your print title to name me something. Then if I just simply save that, I would come back here to the front end and refresh. And now you can see that our page title is name me something and that actually pops up on the document like a typically printed document does. It also has the date and time that it was rendered as well. I'm sure all of this stuff could be changed if you wanted to, but in my case, it's not that big of a deal. I just needed a basic print like this. The last thing worth pointing out is that I'm no JavaScript expert. I could never have come up with this on my own. I walked through this with ChatGPT, trying to get it to help me with something like this. And this is what it spit out after a few iterations and finding the little quirks like images not loading and adding these delays and that sort of thing. So if you're not familiar with JavaScript, which I imagine you're probably not if you're watching this video, you might consider taking this into ChatGPT and asking it to help you modify this if what I'm showing you here doesn't fit your use case specifically, or if there's things you need to tweak, that's how I would recommend going about this. So with that, this is a very simple tutorial on how to print any specific portion of your website. I hope it's helpful. Please consider hitting subscribe before you leave, and I'll look forward to seeing you in a future tutorial. Thanks so much.